<clears throat> what is up, Pyromaniacs? Pyrostasis here. We are back in the world of Feed the Beast Unleashed, and I have fixed it! Well, technically, I didn't fix it. Uh, Lubo, Robert, and Ammo on the live stream screamed at me long enough uh, until we were finally able to figure things out. Uh, unfortunately, there is a there's about a 10 to 12 second delay. So when somebody knows how to make things work and they tell me, sometimes I'm on a different machine by the time I read what they're saying and it doesn't make sense at the time. But I'm going to go ahead and break this down in slow-mo for people that are idiots like me uh, and, and it'll work. So what you need first is you need to make the normal pattern for the 10 cans. So that's just three 10 ingots um, uh, upside down bucket basically. Then you need to make the water setup, which is just basically a 10k coolant cell, uh, which is just four 10 ingots surrounding a water can, which is one of these. Then what you got to do is you got to come over here in your ME interface, and you need to set up one water can equals, or one 10 can equals one water can. And to do that, you come over here, and you fool the system basically like this. And you encode your pattern like that, and one tin can equals one water can. And so basically that walks the entire... Um, oh, pig, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. That walks the machine basically through the process of making the can, then turning the can from a can into a water can, and then from the water can you can set it up into a coolant cell. So um, the guys in the stream were trying to figure that out, uh, or were trying to tell me how to do that, uh, unfortunately... It didn't make sense the way they were explaining it. And finally, after a couple minutes of banging our heads into the wall, we figured it out. So this process right here is really nice because it will 100% walk you through everything. And we went ahead and made 10 coolant cells after we yanked everything out. Uh, and it went ahead and functioned and, and worked just as it was supposed to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here to this machine. And we're going to clear that. And we want to make an overclocker. Because overclockers... Ah, the future. All right, and we're going to set that. We're going to go ahead and encode. Perfect. Slap that in there. Now we've got overclockers. We're going to come back over to these machines, uh, and we're going to start with four overclockers each. Um, overclockers are kind of interesting. You've got to be, and we're going to go ahead and make twelve of these. You got to be careful on how you make overclockers uh, work with these machines. The reason why is the machines are restricted by a few things. First off, you're going to see right here, this is their power. That's how much power that they actually have on board at a time. So let's say, for the sake of argument, there's 100 power in here. Well, let's say for the sake of argument that these cables can produce or can move infinite power. However, if we come over here to this bat box, the bat box is going to be producing 32 power a tick. And a tick, from what I understand, is like 20 seconds, or we're just going to say it's 32 a second. That's not accurate, but for dumbing this down to making it logistic and making people be under, able to understand it, let's just say it's 30. So if we've got 100 here and we've got 30 over there, every second we're going to get 30 power, so it takes technically three seconds to refill this machine. Well, with these overclockers, the way they work is they reduce the time that it costs, but they increase the power. So let's say extracting um, some rubber takes, you know, 50 power. Well, that would take a second and a half per cycle. So the moral of the story to kind of dumb it all down, as you add overclockers, you start using more and more power and you eventually get to the point where you're draining this entire power load instantaneously. Now, when you're draining the power instantaneously, the cables can only get you power so fast. Well, it's not really the cables, it's what you're dealing with right here. So every second we get 32 times 20. So that's what, 640 that goes into here. I don't know what the base storage is here, but with massive amounts of overclockers in here, you can actually pull it to where you're pulling more than 640 power a second. When that happens, your little gold bar icon here drains and the machine just kickstarts over and over again. So you'll hear dee 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 as it does its shit. Unfortunately, that's not ideal. What you need to get is you need to get some of these other upgrades in here. And there's a couple different versions of it. Um, right here, the transformer upgrade. Now, uh, remember in my last episode when I was explaining what we were doing over here and I had that LV transformer? 
Low voltage transformer isn't needed because these only output at 32 a tick, but once we go to medium voltage, with medium voltage, they're gonna be producing, I think it's 64 or 128, something like that. You'll need to downgrade it into this into the setup so that the bat box doesn't explode and then you don't want the machines exploding either well if you put that upgrade in here the transformer upgrade then you can actually move it from low voltage to medium voltage to high voltage etc etc and then you can get rid of the transformers you don't even have to worry about it the other option is the energy storage upgrade and right here you can see right there is it increases the storage by 10,000 eu so for each one of those upgrades that you add, you're increasing the storage, which means it has more juice on hand. Uh, if you use the transformer upgrade and you move up from low voltage to medium or high voltage, you're getting more voltage per tick, which allows you to do more and more and more and more overclockers at a time to, to, to drastically increase your production. So I said all that to kind of give you guys an idea of what's going on. Let's go ahead and show it in action. So let's pull out the overclockers. We have 12 overclockers. 12 overclockers is insane. Uh, let's see, we need uh, sticky resin. Are we really out of sticky resin? Are you seriously telling me we're out of sticky resin? Uh, and I think these are the old trees ones. Ah, uh, shit. All right, let me see which one of these I think these are the old ones, not the new ones. Let's see. Yeah, this is the old kind. So we need the sticky resin trees, which I don't think any of these are. This, These may be them, but I don't think so. No, they're not. Not even remotely. Okay. Well, that's going to be kind of a nasty little setup then. Hang on one second. Uh, we're back in range. Let's look at saplings. Do I have... Ah, here we go. Rubber tree saplings. And do we have any bones or bone meal? We have plenty of bone meal. All right. And then I need uh, some of these. Let's do uh, four. Whoops. I guess it would help if I actually took them out, huh? Okay. Let me show you guys. We're, we're doing all of this for the sake of example. And I'm going to keep a few of them just in case. All right. Put our tap. Pop that out. There we go. Uh, okay. And we're going to come over here. Where's our... There we go. That should be far enough away. Really? You're going to be difficult. Pop these out. There we go. Unfortunately, I do need a decent amount of this stuff uh, to kind of showcase. Let's see, that's six. We're gonna need a little bit more than six. So that you guys can, because with it's gonna be going so fast uh, for me to showcase this correctly, we need a decent number. There we go. And there we go. Perfect. Now these trees will reproduce slowly over time, the little resins. Uh, you can bust the trees open from the sides if you like. Um, however, like always with Minecraft, if you do that with all of the leaves, then you're going to run a risk of not getting as many saplings. So we've got 10. Uh, this will kind of work for us to kind of showcase. I hope it's enough. And I can show you guys the difference uh we're gonna put we're gonna go ahead and put the 12 in there because that'll be impossibly fast and that should cycle out keep your eye on the little energy uh z or icon or whatever you want to call it there you can see we're already draining and the reason why is it just uses so much power so let's put four in there and that's going to speed it up a bit we're not touching the power yet not touching the power yet okay so six is the limit uh technically five is the limit uh, you can see we're draining the power. That's about as fast as it's going to go. And now you're going to hear the... Dee -dee 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 -dee. Yeah, so we're going to pop that out. We're going to leave it at 5. And at 5, you're running as fast as possible while still being energy efficient with our current setup. And that'll let you kind of figure out where you need to be in your cycle to kind of make it, make it function for you. Uh, we do need to make three more of these little systems real quick. Whoops. Shit. Uh, three. Begin.
And a lot of other guys in the stream are letting me know that there are other methods that are a little bit more functional from doing this, uh, specifically, um, what do you call it? The centrifuge, one of the guys says. Uh, the centrifuge will let us pull, uh, his math is correct, 14 rubber per four resin. Now, 14 per four, that is not much better. Uh, with this, for every three, we get 12. So a centrifuge is going to give us 14 from uh, from the same amount. So it's it's two extra bonus. Granted, if you're talking about you know 100,000 resin, that's definitely going to add up and definitely be a bigger number. However, for the most part, with our purposes, it's really really not that big a deal. All right. And now we've got these all capped out and running at top end power. So that should be more than we need uh, for the future. Now, one of the issues that we're gonna be running into now is the fact that we don't have enough of the right rubber trees on reproduction. Um, I've got this little farm right here, which is okay. As you can see, it's it's doing a fairly decent job, uh, but it's, it's not gonna be cycling as fast as uh, a good rubber tree farm would. Now we have a couple options on how we're gonna do this. Um, I think we're gonna use, I believe a squeezer will be what we need. Uh, and we're just gonna change the wood type over here from what it's currently using to a different one, but we do need to verify that a squeezer will work first. Uh, and I, I'm, Pretty sure it'll work. I'm pretty sure it'll work. We've got plenty of these. I just want to make sure that we keep these on hand because you don't want to run out of uh, of your rubber trees because it will suck otherwise. All right. And yeah, the guys in the stream are telling me now I can toss it into the extractor here, but I don't think that gives me resin. At least I don't think it does. Um, I think it just gives me, it just gives me rubber. Yeah. So if I just put those in there, yeah, it'll it'll give us stuff, but it's only going to give the setup. So I, I we're going to try a squeezer. I think is what they're called. Is that what it's called? We've got the extractor. Is it the squeezer? Monster spawner. No, squeezer is going to be a different setup. So, no, I don't think it's a squeezer. Squeezer is going to be uh, forestry, which is totally different. So I'm not actually sure what extracts resin from the rubber trees. Let's see. Yeah. So no, I don't... Uh, <laughs> don't think that's that. Uh, so we're just going to do the, the rubber wood from right here. It'll give us something. It's not going to be amazing but it will give us it'll give us something and we do have quite a bit of it on hand as you can tell so we're just going to do this slap that in there slap that in there slap that in there and then we're going to come over here to the back i believe these are whoa we actually drain the power too fast no Swap it over to four. Wow. So apparently, there is a change in power usage based on what's being produced. Holy crap. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty annoying, actually. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's dig down here because I want to get this resin wood uh, utilized here. So give me just a second. All right, whoops, dropping down. Still not low enough. Oh God! And I do apologize for that horribly loud noise, guys. We'll have that sorted here in just a second as we move away from the system. There we go. Those are going to do that for a while. Alright. Moving away. Moving away. Moving away. Moving away. Moving away. Okay. 
Um, so let's see. Uh, centrifuge. That's what one of the guys is saying is a little bit better option. I've never made a centrifuge before. Uh, but it doesn't look too... Of course, that doesn't look like the right centrifuge. Isn't there a centrifuge in IC2? I could have sworn there was a centrifuge in IC2. Oh, well. Screw it. We're going to go and change the recipe real fast on our farm over here. I'm pretty sure we have enough birch wood now to handle handle us for a good long time. There we go. I just need to click here. Changing it from that to there. There we go. Hopping out. There we go. And over time, that should cycle out. Let me go ahead and break all these. Is it still planting those? It is still planting those. Why is it still planting? I did switch it. WTF, mate. A precision. Oh, it's because it's full. Good God, look at all those trees. There we go. My God! Just a few birch trees. Jesus, look at that. Holy crap. No wonder. There we go. Now we'll start working our way towards getting all the resin we need. There we go. And that farm should be more than enough to keep us rolling with that uh, pretty much forever. Now, the main issue we're going to have now is, as you guys can hear, that really annoying fucking noise in the background. That's what we've got to solve now. Uh, but we're not going to be able to solve that until we make it to medium voltage. So we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We've got five solar panels. Um, we need three more. So let's go ahead and do three. Begin. I'm actually going to step inside here so we don't have to hear that. It's it's either the the hum of the uh, the rock crushers or the hum of the, the squeezers outside. I'm pretty sure the hum of the uh, rock crushers is a little less annoying. Alright, so we're actually running out of coal dust. So we need to make some coal. That's pretty easy to do. I'm going to have to teach one of these machines how to do that as well eventually for now not too big a deal let's put some of these in here these guys all sorted out uh i just realized okay yeah it's good one two three four that should give us enough coal dust to run this and as you guys can kind of see, you know, over time you start getting more and more specialized. You know, when we first started off, we just had, you know, the pulverizers and things along those lines. Now we're going to have individual setups. They're going to handle each of these individual recipes for us um, a little bit at a time. So it should, uh, it should work out pretty good in the long run. All right, so let's see. We've got, I guess it would help if I could spell solar. We now have our three solar panels beautiful 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 all right so we're going to come out here sorry for the noise and i need to move you come on is that the wrong one you know the omni wrench should work with everything okay what the hell is going on i cannot break these Oh, left click. No? What the hell? Okay. I'm 90% sure if I break these with a fist or with the, uh, the pickaxe that it's going to break. Okay, you got to click the top. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, you don't want to break these normally. It ends badly. Fucking A. 
Gosh, so picky. Can't break it from the side. Can't break it from the bottom. Gotta break it from the top. Bitch. Alright, um, now we need to move to the next level of solar. And I'm gonna need more blank patterns now. Let's go ahead and make ten of those. Thank you. Alright, so in solar here, we've got the solar panel, we've got low voltage, we're going to want the medium voltage one. So, whoops, wrong one. Medium voltage. So now we need an MV transformer, which isn't too hard. Let's go ahead and put these in. Alright, so we need the, is that the right one? Medium voltage one? Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. Go ahead and code it. Now I need to learn how to do you. Go ahead and code that. And now I need to learn to do these guys. Um, gold cable. All right, so we need to make the gold cable here. That's pretty easy. And code. And then now we just need to get the rubber out of the system. So give me some rubber, please. Which, as you can see, we've got plenty of now. <laughs> Rubber not going to be problem. Ever. Alright. So we've got these, and you have the option of either making the pop top one or the bottom one. We're just going to make this one down here. It's the same basic recipe. Alright, so we're going to click that. That should be good. Click in code. There we are. And I think that's everything. So that's the gold. Transformer. Low voltage. Yes. Alright. Now all we need to do is click here, put you guys in there, and I believe we can now make the medium solar array. So let's try it. Medium voltage solar array, begin. Whoops, no, begin. And it's going to be producing all of those other little setups. There we go. Medium voltage. Now with this, we are going to need the LV transformer. So we're going to build that. There we go. All right. We'll go ahead and sleep till nighttime. Or daytime, I guess I should say. And there we go. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep a little separation here. So we're going to put him right there. Uh, if I recall, it's like like that, I believe. And then we're gonna do the medium voltage, which is right here. As you can see, well, actually it doesn't tell us how much it produces a tick. Uh, it's more than 32. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what, actually? Let's bypass this completely, what do you say? Well, no, we'll do it in the next episode because that's gonna take a while. <laughs> All right, let's make some glass fiber cables. Uh, what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to be upgrading our bat box from a bat box to an MFE, which is basically the better version. Uh, is that moving in? That's uh, a negative. So we need to switch you around to this. There we go. Oh, of course, I hit the wrong button. There you go. Now you can see that's filling up. Basically what's coming out here, we're getting at a higher rate than 32. The 32 is hitting here and then it's coming into the bat box. Now the problem with that is it's still only pulling at 32 per tick from each of these cables. And that's about as fast as it's going to be putting out. Now I don't know if setting up the secondary cable line like this, like you would with Liquidux or something along those lines, gives you more production. Uh, the guys in the stream are confirming that it is 64 tick. So what we're going to be doing next time is we're going to be making an MFE and that's going to produce, or it's going to have a lot more storage. Uh, it's going to also require us building a few more expensive things, uh, these, namely these energy crystals. Thankfully, I think we have some rubies on hand. I really, really, oh, fuck me. We have no rubies. Well, it's a good thing we're waiting till next time. <laughs> uh, and then the MFE is going to store a shit ton more than this will store. And then we're just going to upgrade our machines to where they're going to be moved from low voltage to medium voltage, which will allow them to take 64 a tick as opposed to 32 a tick. We'll increase their storage and it should all be good. Anyways, hopefully you guys watching are liking this series. If you do, slap that like button. Make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next clip.